Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. In this episode of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast, we are just about one week away from the presidential election here in the United States. And of course, the United States House, um, the uh, one-third of the United States Senate, and a good number of state legislatures and governor's offices are all up for election right now. But of course, all eyes are on the presidential race between former president, the Republican candidate, Donald J. Trump, and the current vice president of the United States, the Democratic candidate, Kamala Harris. There's not, I'm not here to talk about politics in any way, except to talk about the risk that the election poses for civil unrest here in the United States. And I want to make five key points as we're just eight days out from the election right now to talk about just these key takeaways around election-related activism and potential civil unrest this election cycle. First is the possibility of just widespread unrest. Regardless of who wins the race, there is potential for unrest. A victory for Kamala Harris could spark widespread demonstration, while a Trump victory may result in extensive protests and counter demonstrations. It's expected that this unrest, the likelihood of this kind of unrest, would increase in the two or three to four days after the election because we're unlikely to know the winner on election night. All polls indicate right now that this is a very tight race. And because of that, and how we count votes in some states here in the United States, we may not know the answer that evening, and it may take a few days for counting and mandatory recounts and absentee ballots and mail-in ballots to all be counted and have a clear result at the end of that. The second factor are just election day dynamics. Um, there's limited unrest that I would anticipate on election day itself, but a larger unrest can follow if either candidate claims victory prematurely or if the final results are delayed really by more than four days. And of course, in 2020, we had both candidates claiming victory, uh, one accurately, one inaccurately. And that led to a significant amount of turmoil around the disinformation which takes me to point three, the post-election contestation, contesting the election. Legal challenges and recounts, especially at the state level, can be major triggers for civil unrest. Accusations of fraud, all of these things lead to potential escalation if the election outcome is overturned or if it is questioned or if it is uncertain in those days after the election. The fourth the one that I probably fear the most is extremist exploitation. That extremists can, may seek to amplify tensions, targeting critical infrastructure or attempting to capitalize on chaotic protest situations. And of course, in this, I would also include nation state actors and other organizations outside of the United States that seek to sow unrest and discord, particularly on social media, instigating the type of chaos that we see often in other countries around election results. The, the, the tension is already here for a similar reaction here in the United States. Number five, what does this mean for corporate risk? Well, companies will probably face indirect risks in this situation. Disruptions to operations, disruptions and risks to employee safety, especially in states that are contested or where there are accusations of voter fraud or election corruption. Um, firms that have a history of political involvement on one side or the other, or who have taken controversial stances in the run-up to this election, could experience, could experience targeted activism directed at them. I think most companies that are going to be at risk are going to be in the swing states, in the capital cities, or other cities where there may be protests, or challenges on either side of the issue or either political side if you want to think of it in that way. But the risk is really, in my mind, in that two to four days after the election as the result is being determined, as the final counts or recounts are happening. We could, of course, see, like we saw in the 2020 election, a long period of contestation of the election where there are legal challenges, where there is an ongoing um, 
undercurrent uh, from one side around a stolen election. Some of this we're still hearing about four years later. Um, but I think from in terms of initial planning, I would concentrate on thinking about those two, three, four, five days after the election until we get to at least our first understanding of what that result will be. I would encourage all of you to continue to make contingency plans with your organization, thinking about what this time period between the election and the transition on January 20th could look like and continue to monitor credible news sources and work with your public sector partners in order to be the most prepared you can for what we may face in terms of unrest. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.